Hi everyone, welcome to The Secret Art of Business. And my guest today is Doug Joseph, and he has a very successful business that is called Sarah Creative that you've been doing for over 13 years now. You know, you started when you were a child, like a lot of us, and I, you have definitely had a lot of success. And I can definitely say that because in a, in a creative industry in general, you know, it can be kind of hit or miss, but like, again, you're over a decade doing this. And that is alone super fabulous. Um, so with that, I wanted to kind of get started. Um, well, firstly, you know, let's let's just have you talk a little bit about Sarah Creative. Let, what what do you guys do over there? Yeah, thanks for having me on the show, Catherine, and uh, happy to start there. So, origin is Sarah. Uh, the company was founded out of my apartment on my kitchen table. Love it. And uh, slowly built a team over time. Uh, before I started the company, my background was in filmmaking, doing freelance music videos, documentaries, traveled all over the world, Iceland, Nepal, Indonesia. Uh, through those experiences, I learned the art of storytelling. And I decided I wanted a new challenge and I wanted to help businesses tell their story. So that was uh, the foundation of Serif. Uh, I wanted to help companies tell their story and make an emotional connection. Uh, so we're a modern brand content studio. We help tell uh, companies stories uh, through video production. I, I love that. And um, if your company does not have a story, they should definitely get in touch with you because that is a game changer when it comes to marketing. Um, what is your website really quick? Yeah, it is www.serifcreative.com. Perfect. And I will include that on the Instagram page too, in case people want to quick click to that. Now you did not, um, you were not born a business owner, um, or maybe you were, you know, but just had to get old enough to, to do it. So what did you do as a kid that you really, really loved doing? Yeah, as a kid, uh, I had a great childhood, great upbringing, kind of an all American upbringing, um, grew up in Southeastern Ohio. Um, and had a great family, you know, played with kids in the neighborhood, uh, grew up playing sports. Uh, I can recall in the first grade, we were prompted, what do you want to be when you grow up? Mm -hmm. And we had to draw what we wanted to be when we grew up. And I drew myself as an artist. I drew an easel um, and myself painting on the easel. So from a kid, I always wanted to be an artist. And as far as entrepreneurship, nobody in my family is an entrepreneur on my dad's side. However, on my mom's side, um, my grandma uh, was a business owner and she actually owned a biker bar uh, in my hometown. And growing up, I was actually babysat there. Uh, my parents would drop me off throughout the day when they went to work and my grandma would watch my sister and I at her biker bar before it opened. Oh, and goodness. sometimes we would be there when the customers would arrive and it was there where I really learned the art of storytelling, uh, the art of community. So I would hang out with the bikers and the laborers. And I think if I had to trace back where my desire and understanding of storytelling and community comes from, I would point to my grandma's biker bar. I could not love that anymore. First, that your grandma is out there with a business because that was practically unheard of but such a colorful <laughs> business too, which is really awesome. Yeah, and I was actually preparing for a talk once and I was working with my coach and I was telling him about my upbringing and I told him that and he's like, whoa, 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 that's so interesting. And I was like, oh, I didn't think anything of it because I, as a kid, you know, I'd, I would take naps on the pool table and he's like, that's amazing. And I was like, well, it's just what I knew. That, and I didn't really think yeah. anything of it, you know, so um but yeah, my childhood was great. Um, my parents were very supportive and uh, played a lot of sports. I boxed, uh, did, did you, MMA, you, played football. Since you envisioned yourself as an artist, did, did you find yourself drawing a lot or you know, doing things oh, yeah. like that? Yeah, I was constantly expressing myself, whether it was through drawing, whether it was through music. But I found the highest expression of art to be film. And I was into drawing and I was in a band, but once I got into film, I really fell in love because it combined every art form. It combined photography, music, dance, acting, you know, you name it. So that's what I really loved about the medium. 
So when did you start filming then? What was your very first film that you made? Yeah, great question. So I started making films in my parents' backyard with my friends. Oh. My dad had one of those over-the-shoulder beta cams. Remember yes, those? Yes, yes. And the first time he let me use that and I looked through the viewfinder, it just changed the way I saw the world. And uh, I started out just making home movies and uh, short films with my friends in my parents' backyard. Oh, I, I just love that so much. Um, all right, so time to get a job, though. What was your um, first job? And let's talk a little bit about your career path. So what was your first job? And then how did you get, what was like the journey to get to business ownership? Yeah, uh, I will give you <laughs> the trailer and not the entire movie to that <laughs> answer. <laughs> I've had an interesting career path. Oh, yeah. but, but long story short, my first job was uh, working at Blockbuster. Nice. Uh, first, first job that I enjoyed. Um, I'll say that. My, Fair enough. First job, though, for real, was working at a car wash, and I did not like it. I had to get out, so I started working at Blockbuster because I realized it could be my film school. So when I was working, I was oh, learning. Yes. I was reading the backs of mo the back of movies, and um, that's also where I learned sales. I uh, was like the regional leader in selling movie passes, uh, so I, I love doing that. Um, but Blockbuster was a job that I had in high school. Um, and then from there, I jumped into freelance, uh, started shooting films and documentaries and music videos. Um, and then from there, started Serif. Wow. So wow. It, is, it is snowballed over time of doing freelance. And I didn't necessarily have a desire to start a business. It just got to the point where I was so busy and I couldn't do all the work. I started to build a team around me and it just developed organically. <laughs> I just took that show on the road. Um, are you one of those people, and I am too, that, that does this, which is why I have to ask, that if you go out to a movie, you have to get there early so you can watch all the trailers? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Like, the thought of being late to a movie theater gives me anxiety thinking about it. Like, oh, I mean, we gotta get it, there it's an art in itself to create those trailers. I mean, you know, you, you're essentially trying to sell people to come back and watch this movie. So I just love them so much. Absolutely. And movies, typically, I have to watch twice because one time I watch it, I'll view it through a technical lens. <laughs> and the second time I watch it, I'll watch it for the sake of entertainment and enjoyment. enjoyment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's, that's actually, you know, something I never thought of that if you work a lot behind the camera, you're going to see, you're going to look, take it from such a critical angle, you yeah. know, initially and be like, Oh, you know what? Or for me, I will get lost in a movie because I just really love the cinematography or something. It's like, you know, the right. story was okay, but the cinematography was amazing. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Cinematography. Um, can make or break a film and you know there are so many dps out there that i love roger yeah. deakins like he's top of the list chivo he's top of the list yeah it's it's tough to watch movies sometimes for me i, I actually saw a meme recently that accurately portrayed how i feel and it showed a, a football player in uniform in the stands watching a football game and yeah. the meme, the title was how it feels as a filmmaker watching a film. And I, I, it, I, I feel it, that very much it, <laughs> it hit home. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm involved with different types of arts, but I feel that so, so much, you know, it's perfect. Um, so you ended up starting a business, you know, you, you're, you're like, I'm, I'm going to just do this myself. So how do you feel that, um, cause you, you are in very, very much of a still of a creative space. Um, so how has that fed the left side of your brain? You know, now we're talking about that, um, the, the, the dirty details, the stuff that is not, you know, with a broad brush, it's the spreadsheets, it's the budgets, it's things like that. So how does that work for you as far as getting great balance from both sides of your brain? Yeah, I'm excited to camp out here, you know, left brain, right brain. I'm very much right brain. I'm a creative through and through. 
I've over indexed on that over the years. I'm very much big picture, vision, think visually, future focused. So the left side has never come natural to me. And numbers, math, I've just never seen a purpose for it. But once (laughs) once I started to learn there is a purpose behind this, it clicked. And I activate the left side of my brain. I have dived deep into the data and the finances of my business. I know how to read a balance sheet and a P&L. And the way I think about it is I'm not an expert. I don't have a deep expertise in finance, but I know enough to be dangerous. Uh, to put it into an analogy, like I know how to do, uh, you know, change, in oil, change the oil in my car and do basic repairs mm-hmm, here mm-hmm. and there, but I don't know how to do internal engine repair. Right. So that's how I think about finance. Like I know enough to be oh, dangerous. I, I can, I know the terminology, the lingo. I can, I, I know how to talk numbers, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but the way I've balanced that, uh, I have a great fractional CFO that I work with, that we have a great connection, uh, high level of trust and, I work really well with an assistant over the years. I've always had an assistant to balance me out, um, to help with organization and keeping me on track. Um, just overall, you know, bringing a balance, but, uh, you know, just to tie this up, um, one of my mentors recently, recently told me a great story and it's relevant to what we're talking about. He, um, played basketball. And he was good at dribbling right, but terrible at dribbling left. And every coach would want to improve on him dribbling left. But one year he was at a basketball camp and a coach told him, don't worry about dribbling left. Just dribble right, get really good at that. And then eventually your left hand will be able to do what your right hand does. So I think sometimes people over index on focusing on their weaknesses when really just lean into your strength surround yourself with people who complement your weaknesses and go from there i i think there is definitely a common thread with people that deal with that balance i mean i i think i'm fairly split both ways but a lot of the stuff that you have said definitely resonates to the point of where you know what i need an expert i I mean i love your analogies which of course comes directly from all the storytelling that you do (laughs) um so yeah i i think you've really kind of painted a, a really great picture of how people who might have a weakness in one thing can kind of you know, figure out how to still calculate. And honestly, you know, I, I, that goes back, you know, to a whole, that whole, you know, who's a visionary of your business. You know, you do need to have those people with the big picture visions um, because the people that do the, the fine work and the details, they, they don't. They're great at executing. And, you know, I, I think that they are just as needed as a visionary. But the, thing, the big difference with, I think, businesses that are successful do you have a strong visionary at the helm and you're, you're definitely illustrating yourself as being one of those people. Yeah. Thanks Catherine. And I think there can be advantages when it comes to being right brain and looking at the operations, the finance, more of the left brain task of your business. I've found that over the years I can look at things from an outside perspective, more of a beginner's mind, Mm -hmm. and see things that my accountant or my CFO might not consider, Uh, whether it's, you know, a certain investment, tax Mm write-off, you know, just looking at things that maybe they haven't considered. So I think there is some advantages. No, I I would agree because I'm very much of the school of what if. Well, what? I know that's how we're supposed to do it, but what if? (laughs) Yeah. And you just kind of throw out something different. And I I love, or at least I feel empowered very much by having other people exercise their bigger thinking um, just by introducing, you know, what I like to refer to as just these crazy ideas. And they can always say, no, I've gotten completely comfortable with that too. But um, it's, it's a matter of, you know, let's just, think about this differently for a second, you know, and kind of like what happens if I mix these two colors together? You know, what happens if I, you know, shoot this, you know, film completely upside down, then what happens, you know? Um, So, yeah, Yeah. I I think that is a very, very powerful thing and how it it feeds into, 
just the business in general. Um, sure. How have you found it to be an advantage for you? I'm curious. You're an artist, <laughs> you're right brain, you're a business owner. How has that um, been able to be activated it goes, in your it goes business? Back to just that, you know, I, uh, you know, I, I don't, I'm not a good rule follower. I am, but I'm not. I mean, I like to know how things are supposed to be, but then I will question it to death. Um, just because it's like, has anybody thought about this? And so, and, you know, a lot of times people have thought about this, but sometimes they don't. And I think that's when, you know, that's where the gold is. You know, I have told everyone on my team, I'm the visionary. Don't expect me to be too much more than that. But, you know, I mean, I built, I did used to do all the jobs. So now I'm like giving other people opportunities, as I like to say. Sure. But, um, yeah, I, I find that I don't think we could have pulled off what we did if I really was kind of clueless or yeah. If, if I had any clue what I was doing, I don't think we could have pulled it off because <laughs> I do, you know, I do recruiting and that is a very old formulated sort of business to be in. And I had no idea other than occasionally having been recruited myself, how it works. So I just kind of made it all up. And when you can make it all up, there's, there's no guardrails on it, you know? And I think that we really kind of introduce a whole different process, especially finding marketing people, which is our specialty, just in that it's not, um, there's more to it than just, you know, resumes and keywords and butts and seats. You know, it, it we, I take it super personally because that's the business I was in. Um, sure. So I think all of that just kind of layered in and, you know, how do we do this? Oh, I have no idea. So let's just try some things and, you know, or, and my analogy would be with painting. So let's throw some, color on a canvas and see what we can come up with. It doesn't, hasn't made anything yet. Nope. Well, we'll throw it away and we'll start again. <laughs> you know? Um, so that's, I mean, that's how it's kind of worked for me, I guess, in that it's, it's just, you know, more of a free thinking way to grow a business. Right. Right. Yeah. I love those thoughts. Well, cool. Um, is there anything else that you would still like to do over at Sarah? Yeah. Great question. Um, the motivation behind starting the company, you know, just from a personal perspective, I wanted to produce documentaries, feature films, original content. And I wanted to DIY it. I didn't want to work the Hollywood circuit. And Seraph is now in a place where we are doing that. Uh, so 10 years in, um, we're now in a place where we're making our own original content, which is really exciting. That is really exciting. And are you finding that because there are so many ways to get films out there now? I mean, cause you know, back in the day you had to like have a movie screen and you know, know all the right people, but now you can put it out on YouTube. I mean, you can put it, you can have like Netflix pick it up, you know, um, you don't have to rely Absolutely. on, you know, just a, such a small circle of people. Are you finding that that's creating more opportunities for you? Absolutely. It's now decentralized. And back in the day, you would work uh, uh, a film festival circuit. You would try to make buzz there in hopes of, you know, a Warner Brothers, uh, a Universal, you know, seeing your work and then picking it up. But now it's flipped where, you know, the filmmakers can go directly to the buyer. It's no different than any other B2B oh, wow. outbound sale. So because there is, uh, you know, a great uh, amount of streaming platforms now, they now are picking up original content. And, you know, they've set aside, you know, huge budgets to acquire original content. Um, so it's been fantastic. You know, we're just getting started. Um, and Serif is, you know, broken up into two divisions now. And, you know, love serving clients. We'll always do that. I think it's uh, something that, you know, will continue to be in, in my DNA. I think it's when you can create those win-win scenarios in business, there's nothing else like it. When, you know, the company pays us money and then as a result of our work, they make more money than they paid us. Like we're both in a better place. It's it's amazing. So it is. It is. That, I'm, I'm addicted to that and I'll continue to do commercial work with brands um, and we've dabbled in branded entertainment, which is like a mix of original content and commercial. We've started to do that. So that's part of the other division of Seraph. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but yeah, as far as, um, you know, where we're going and to answer your question, I, that's 
really what we're camping out on right now is uh, producing original content. That is so awesome. And I um, know that you have a winning formula because if I read your bio correctly, you um, were Emmy nominated. Am I correct in thinking of that? Yeah, yeah. What, there was, what was some commercial that for? What work. Was your project. Yeah, that was a that was a fun project. It was for a brand. Uh, the name of the brand is Soapbox Soaps, and we did a a commercial spot for them. Um, it was a comedic spot. Um, if you Google uh, Soapbox Soaps, How Kids Get Dirty, um, that was the one that was nominated for an Emmy. I, I'm going to try to look that up after this. Yeah. <laughs> um, are there any other major awards that you have gotten along the way? Honestly, uh, there has been. Uh, you know, I don't put too much uh, merit into it. Um, like we've won Marcoms and Addies and it doesn't really benefit us. Like, yeah, it gives us some street cred and it's a fun talking point. It doesn't lead to new business, but it does make our clients feel good. And it's cool to give them the trophies and it's in their, their offices and they can show their bosses. So that part I like, but you know, awards, I, I haven't put too much stock in over the last few years. Well, I just I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you to try and change your thinking on that a little bit only because somebody did that for me because I was talking to okay. somebody somebody asked me that question which is why I asked you that question and yeah you know, let's I hear went it through my list of some things that I've gotten and um, and they're like do you really celebrate those I'm like no I go back to work you know it's just like <laughs> achievement all right um, and the, he said it's, so it's kind of like when the Griswolds go on vacation and they just you know <laughs> look at the Grand Canyon and then move on I think yeah, it's, it, it's kind of like that so let's us creative people try and celebrate our wins a little more because I think mm. that um, I, I don't think that creative people get enough credit and that's one of the reasons of this podcast too so um, yeah let's just get let's just get drunk the next time that we win something and <laughs> really celebrate it for a moment okay. well and, and just say, you uh, know what? that was kind of cool you know I I my right brain is is, is useful too so um, you've changed my mind. Um, the Telly Awards are coming up, and I considered, you know, throwing our name in the hat for that one because we've never participated. But I think it would mean a lot to our team, like the, all the folks who've worked on the film projects, yeah. to put them in the spotlight. There so I'll report all back right. after we uh, after we submit to the Telly Awards. I am going to look for that. I'm going to look for that. Um, and with that, I think we can kind of wrap this up. I cannot tell you how much I appreciate your time today. This was such a great conversation. And I think maybe we will have to get together for lunch or a, a drink to celebrate something and yeah. um, and talk more because this is this is great. I, and I also like hanging around with like-minded people. So I think if anything, maybe we can kind of create a community with this podcast so we can all kind of lean on the people that, you know, are that those creative people and yet, and yet have this this business thing kind of going on too. So. <laughs> I'm here for it. Yeah, that sounds great, Catherine. Right, awesome. Thank you so much. Yep. Have a good rest of the day. Thanks for having me on the show. Oh, my pleasure. Hi, everyone. Welcome to The Secret Art of Business. And my guest today is Doug Joseph. And he has a very successful business that is called Sarah Creative that you've been doing for over 13 years now. You know, you started when you were a child like a lot of us, and I, you have definitely had a lot of success. And I can definitely say that because in a, in a creative industry in general, you know, it can be kind of hit or miss. But like, again, you're over a decade doing this, and that is alone super fabulous. Um, so with that, I wanted to kind of get started. Um, well, firstly, you know, let's, let's just have you talk a little bit about Sarah Creative. Let, what, what do you guys do over there? <laughs> 